We have with us today some very experienced worker members. Uh, Teresa, Teresa Busio is originally from Michoacan. Uh, she had the experience, uh, if you see her bio, she had the experience a number of years ago of working in a garment factory for just a few dollars an hour. And now uh, oh, it's quite wonderful to see that she's a member of Apple Eco, Ap Apple Eco Cleaning in Queens. Uh, Yadira Fragoso uh, is originally from Mexico City. Uh, for quite some time after she moved to the United States to New York, she was actually a manager at Chipotle, but she prefers instead to be working at Cise Puede Women's Cleaning, which is now the second largest worker cooperative business in New York City with about six, over 60 members. Uh, it's been operating since 2007, and uh, Yadira has actually been the president for a, for a spell for a year of Cise Puede, and she's now currently the vice chairperson of the New York City Network of Worker Cooperatives. And we have Annie Sullivan Chin, uh, who has worked at two worker co-ops. Originally, uh, she worked at a bike delivery worker co-op, hauling and delivery uh, uh, in Massachusetts. And she's now uh, uh, on the worker member track at a bookkeeping cooperative. So you can see some of the diversity of experience there. You can, be, you can ride a bike at a worker co-op, and you can do the books at a worker co-op. And she's also a Dawn peer advisor. Dawn is, stands for Democracy at Work Network. It's a national network of experienced worker members who are available to give advice to other worker members. Um, and we have Yadira Sanchez here who is going to translate on stage. Uh, she uh, works at Workers' Justice Project and they help to organize uh, Apple, Apple Eco Cleaning. So uh, without further ado, please go right ahead. They'll each speak for a few minutes, uh, and then we'll go straight to Q&A. Okay. Buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Teresa Bucio. Soy de México. Uh, tengo 15 años viviendo aquí en Nueva York. Y este, soy miembro del proyecto de justicia laboral. También soy miembro de la cooperativa de Apo Eco Cleaning. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Teresa Bucio. I am from Mexico and I have lived in the United States for 15 years. I am a member of the Workers' Justice Project and a member of Apple Eco Cleaning Cooperative. Voy a compartirles un poco de mi historia. Um, yo cuando llegué aquí a Estados Unidos, por mucho tiempo trabajé en fábricas. Um, pues la verdad, el trato que recibíamos era un trato no justo, yo trabajaba alrededor de 80 horas a la semana para ganarme 300 dólares, um, pues como siempre con miedo de pedirle permiso al patrón, no nos daba permiso, incluso yo cuando me embarazo no me daba permiso de yo ir al doctor, a mis citas, entonces este, cuando empezaron las factorías a cerrar y todo eso, yo me quedé desempleada. Entonces yo escuché de una parada de mujeres, de jornaleras, en Winnesburg, Brooklyn. Entonces, este, junto con mi hermana llegué ahí en tiempo de invierno. Hacía un frío terrible, um, lluvia, nieve, que había que soportarla, esperando que empleadoras, empleadores vinieran a recogerme para trabajar. Yo esperé por dos meses ahí sufriendo frío y todo para poder conseguir un trabajo. Al cabo de eso, estuve trabajando por dos años ahí, pero, o sea, pocas horas, no era un trabajo seguro, y pues era un trabajo no seguro, no estable. Let me share a little bit of my story. I worked in factories for many years. I used to work 80 hours per week, and I wasn't paid overtime. I didn't have the right to take a break, and I was barely making $300 a week. Many times, I wasn't allowed to take a day off to visit the doctor, not even when I was pregnant. With the recession, factories started closing out, and I lost my job. I was looking for work, and I was told to come to a female day laborer corner in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I went along with my sister in the winter time, and I stood there in the open waiting for work and suffered the cold weather, rain, and snow. 
At the corner, I found work after two months, but only for a few hours a week. Um, at the corner, we are exposed to many abuses like wage theft, sexual harassment, and poor working conditions. De ahí conocí al proyecto de justicia laboral, igual al que pertenezco ahora, porque ella, ellos tienen una um, organizadora que todos los miércoles iba a la esquina y nos enseñaba cómo defender nuestros derechos laborales, cómo negociar con el empleador por una cantidad que fuera algo que valiera la pena para nosotros. Y entonces, este, pues así duré trabajando por dos años. Nos enseñó también a defender nuestros derechos entonces, de ahí empezamos, a, pues ya cansadas del maltrato, pues también que trabajábamos con productos químicos que nos hacían daño, empezamos a organizar a las mismas trabajadoras de la esquina de Buenas Buenas Brooklyn este, a formar una cooperativa con el apoyo del proyecto de justicia laboral, que formamos una cooperativa que fue en el 2010. After two, year, after two years of being work, working and looking for work at the corner, I met the Work and Justice Project. The organization had meeti meetings um, every Wednesday where she was teaching us labor laws and taught us how to defend our rights. Uh, we were tired of the abuses and using chemical products to clean, and together with the Work and Justice Project and some of the female day laborers started our cooperative called Apple Eco Cleaning in 2010. Para empezar, no todo fue fácil, porque nosotras éramos trabajadoras que ganábamos poco. Lo primero, no teníamos dinero, fondos, cómo empezar una cooperativa. No sabíamos qué era una cooperativa, no sabíamos ni los beneficios de una cooperativa. Pero para todo esto, gracias al proyecto de justicia laboral y también gracias al a TED de Barbie, Barbie, del Centro de Justicia Urbana, um, él nos apoyó mucho con enseñándonos, dándonos aprendizaje y gracias a eso pudimos este, lograr este, sacar nuestro sueño adelante, formar la cooperativa. Uh, but not everything was easy. One of the challenges is that when we started our cooperative, we didn't have any money to invest. We didn't know anything about a business plan or how to start a cooperative. With the support of the Work Justice Project and Ter Barbieri from the Urban Justice Center, Uh, he gave us some knowledge and we started working and that is how we started our dream, which was a cooperative, to start a cooperative. Lo que me gusta a mí de mi cooperativa, que todas somos, somos dueñas trabajadoras. De mi cooperativa todas somos iguales. Uh, ninguna es más, ninguna es menos, todas nos apoyamos. Um, tomamos decisión por mayoría. O sea, nosotros, y lo que, me gusta, lo que más me gusta que nosotros, hay muchos modelos de cooperativas, nosotros no copiamos ningún modelo, nosotras mismas hicimos nuestras propias reglas, pusimos nuestros propios, uh, uh, por ejemplo, nosotros nuestros propios precios, este, cómo queríamos que nuestra cooperativa funcionara, lo hicimos por nosotras mismas, o sea, no, o, o sea, buscamos información en internet y todo, ¿verdad? Pero no hubo una cooperativa que fuimos y le dijimos, ¿cómo trabajan ustedes? Por favor, nos pueden enseñar. No, o sea, lo que me gusta que… Mi cooperativa es de mujeres luchonas que, o sea, entre nosotras buscamos y lo logramos. Uh, what I like about my <laughs> what I like about my cooperative is that we are the owners of our cooperative. All of the members together shows our name, rules, structure, and the way we wanted to manage our cooperative. We are the ones who take the decisions by majority and also agreements. In my cooperative, all of the members, we share the same equality. What I like the most about my cooperative is that we are the women and the members, the mothers, the ones that work hard to make this dream come true. También me gusta de, con, de mi cooperativa que mediante por nuestra cooperativa, o sea, todas hemos podido uh, mejorar nuestras condiciones de vida al ganar un salario digno. Porque aparte, déjenme compartirles que mi cooperativa, todas somos mamás solteras. Y, o sea, ha sido que yo me doy cuenta que nuestro trabajo ha sido valorado como cualquier otro trabajo. O sea, nos respetan como cualquier trabajador. No porque es que seamos de limpieza, tú eres menos. Uh, mira que la abogada aquella es más que tú. Uh, trabajar de limpieza es un oficio como cualquier otro. Eso no es una vergüenza, para mí es un orgullo. Y más que hemos podido salir como mujeres migrantes adelante. We are also owners of our work. 
Through the cooperative, we are able to improve our working conditions. And also, what I like about my cooperative is that we are single mothers, and we were able to manage and dignify the work we do, and to be recognized, valued, and respected at, as any other profession. Being a housekeeper, for me, is a pride, because we transform and we, are, we have the same value as any other person, just like a lawyer. También, por ejemplo, ahora que yo tengo mi cooperativa, cuando yo era jornalera, um, yo, por ejemplo, a la semana yo ganaba 150 dólares por semana. Y ahora, gracias de, a que se valore el trabajo en la cooperativa, el trabajo que hacemos, yo gano a, a de 20 a 25 dólares la hora. Y pues, para mí eso es un gran logro. Through the cooperative, I provide to my family a fair salary. Compa compared to the 150 dollars I used to make while working at the corner, through the cooperative, I earn between 20 and 25 dollars per hour. Otras ventajas que tenemos que nosotros junto con el proyecto de justicia laboral trabajamos juntas y e impulsamos a más mujeres migrantes como nosotros a que se organicen y que se sigan superando mediante talleres de computación, inglés básico, liderazgo y o sea, o sea yo, yo se los digo porque yo fui jornalera por dos años, yo sé lo que se siente estar en una esquina esperando por trabajo, que no le den trabajo a uno, a veces uno va solamente con lo de la metrocardia y de regreso, Y o sea, yo lo que se siente, entonces yo sé que si nos organizamos, se puede. O sea, y mi, y mi modelo, o sea, es una, um, ¿cómo les diré? Es un ejemplo a seguir. Other advantages that I like about the cooperative is that the, uh, together with the Workers' Justice Project, help organize other women to improve their lives and the lives of their families. And we are doing that through skills like learning uh, workshops, Excel, computer literacy, leadership, and finances. What I like about my cooperative is that before where I used to work um, as a day laborer, usually I got the metro card just to, to get to the corner and I didn't, if, if I didn't get any work, I didn't have a way back to go back home. And through the cooperative and through the organization, we help uh, the members and we are also helping other women to leave the corner and to find better wages and better working conditions. Estos cambios positivos no hubieran sido posibles sin la creación de modelos como mi cooperativa y el apoyo del Centro del Trabajador, como el proyecto de justicia laboral, que permite a trabajadores migrantes como nosotras poder organizarnos para defender nuestros derechos y levantar, nuestra digna, nuestra, levantar una economía digna como migrantes. Mientras, y así pues estamos contribuyendo al país porque pagamos taxes, tanto personales como la cooperativa. Y yo invito a pues todas las personas que se unan, organicen una cooperativa y que sí se puede. These positive changes wouldn't be possible without creating models like my cooperative and support of the worker centers and uh, organizations like Workers Justice Project that allows immigrant workers like us to organize to defend our rights and raise dignity as workers and migrants, mi migrants while we build a fair economy for all in this country. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. She just gave me the pass. Um, Yadira from Si Se Puede Women's Cooperative. We offer, <laughs> yeah, we offer cleaning service. Um, so, Si Se Puede started in 2006 uh, with 15 members that was in Brooklyn, uh, supported for the Center for Family Life. I just started to join the co-op in 2008, and the reason why I started the co-op was because uh, I, I was working in a restaurant, and I'm a single mom. So it was very difficult for me to to work because in the restaurant I I have to work uh, many hours, and I'm a single man. My kids sometimes I have to take my kids with me to be there with me for the whole shift that I work, and so it was hard. So when I knew about the the si se puede first open house that they have in 2007, I decided to apply and. And I got in, and it was a long process to 
start getting clients and everything. But in the beginning, I didn't know anything about co-ops. And I think most of the people, the founders and most of the people that are in the co-op right now, we don't know, we didn't know what was co-op. So I started to learn when I started in the co-op. And in the beginning, it, it was difficult for me to change the job, like to be in a restaurant as a manager and do the cleaning. It was hard for me to, to make that change. But uh, now I don't regret it. I feel very happy. I think, uh, like, she, like Teresa said, uh, cleaning is a job. Uh, and I'm pretty sure what I've been learning in for the six years that I've been in the co-op, it could help me maybe in the future to create uh, another kind of co-op. I don't know, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but definitely, uh, it's very good to be in a co-op because the benefits are great. Uh, like we, the wages, the we get to increase our income. So, uh, and also most of the members that we are in the co-op, we just finished high school, some elementary school. Most of the members, we don't speak English very well, but being in a co-op is like a small career. Why? Because for the, the, the things that we, we learn how to manage our own business, taking workshop as a, I don't know, like computer, like she was saying. Uh, I remember myself and some of the members in my co-op that when we started, we were very shy, we don't like to talk. And now I, I look myself being here in the panel and I feel very, very proud of myself because I feel more confident when I speak. I'm nervous, but I feel more confident and, and that's great and also, I think being in, in personally, I've been in different communities in my co-op. Like, uh, I was the president last year, and that made me learn more. And like the other panel were mentioned something like our kids, they, they see us here, like right now my son is right there. And, I remember, and our way here, I was telling him, oh, I feel nervous. and. Don't worry, mommy, you should start telling, introduce yourself and things like that. Why? And that makes me happy that, that he looks interesting in me. <laughs> and, and I think that happened with all the members. Our sons uh, see us growing up here uh, in a very successful co-op that we have. It's been running for eight years. And we have uh, conflicts, like they were saying, we have a, a challenge to that sometimes it's hard to 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 figure it out how we're gonna do it and sometimes I remember sometimes I feel like uh, I just wanna quit I like I, I'm gonna leave the call like they were saying but what is why I'm still here because I like the job I've been learning a lot I need the job also, <laughs> and I need the money, and and I want to help other people. That she was saying, she invited more people to to create a co-ops, and our co-ops it had it has already four open house. We started with 15 members. Now we're 60, 54 members, and. I, what I see is that very soon we need a, we're gonna need another open house, and that's great because we're helping a lot of people to get the same benefits uh, that we gain. Also, I think it helps the our community in Sunset Park because most of the members are from the same community, and that's great. I think uh, I don't know. I feel happy to be part of the co-op, and. That's it, I think. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Annie Sullivan Chin. I'm with a bookkeeping cooperative, which is a startup bookkeeping cooperative. 
I'm also, as Chris said, uh, a historically I was a, in a, with a co-op called Pedal People Cooperative in Northampton, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, can I just get a quick time check, Chris? How long should I ramble on for? You know, uh, five or six minutes, and then we can do maybe fif 15 minutes of Q&A, and then we can get everyone to lunch. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So as I said, I began working with Pedal People Cooperative in 2010. It was the very first cooperative that I, I, I worked for. Um, before that, I was working on farms in Western Massachusetts. I was very used to hard work and being outside. And before that, I went to Mount Holyoke College. And since I have been blessed with a wonderfully and intellectually stimulating education, but I had no business skills, so I went to go work on a farm. And through the, that experience, learned that a cooperative model might be great for this farm, but I had no idea how to do that. So I started to work with pedal people. Uh, I switched industries. And uh, the consistency was that it was also hard work outside. And that was good for me. But I began to learn uh, about what a cooperative is. I didn't know what a cooperative was before. Uh, let it, uh, albeit a worker-owned cooperative, no less. And I was interested. And I have to give props to Pedal People and to Cisa Puede and all of these cooperatives that hire potential worker members that have no idea what cooperatives are. They're just interested and they're motivated. Uh, and those and are qualified to do the work, the services, the products that the cooperative provides. Um, so that's a fantastic learning experience. And I would say that Pedal People was an incredible opportunity to develop my cooperative uh, business skills and to develop leadership skills, which I think is so important, uh, especially with people from marginalized communities that are not provided or encouraged even to be leaders. And I think this is a, an endemic problem in politics and in, in, and in the economy today is we have a lack of strong and morally guided leaders. So as a queer woman of color, I have not always been presented with opportunities to be a leader, as I said. And I've ha I have had many work experiences where I've been paid less, uh, for whatever reason, where my opinion hasn't mattered. Um, and I've also had comments made about my body, my physical strength, um, comments that were in nature objectifying or uh, masculinizing or feminizing, and none of which are things that I'm comfortable with, just to be clear. Um, but by contrast, in worker cooperatives, I've never been afraid to be myself. And I've only been with two cooperatives, but I can see this as a trend. Um, it's a very, very inclusive community. And in the co-op music, the co-op movement as a whole, I feel, has radically inclusive values. And I think that it makes it a remarkable and unique example of a social movement. And all of our cooperative businesses are within the, uh, are under the umbrella of this larger social movement. And I've noticed that other social movements, both historical and contemporary, define solidarity, which is, as we know, a cooperative value, in a way that creates an us versus them dynamic. And I understand that context is crucial in the development in a, in, of, in a social movement, and that sometimes exclusionary practices can be justified for reasons of safety or uh, violence prevention. But I celebrate the fact that the co-op movement as a whole is inclusionary by, cho by choice. Uh, we choose to define our solidarity through inclusion and an appreciation of difference. And this is something that I've found in my experience in worker cooperatives and something that I love to witness in other people's experiences. I've never seen a more diverse social movement. Every conference that I go to, um, every co-op that I become acquainted with, um, we're strengthened by coalitions and cooperation among cooperatives uh, as a cooperative principle, and the support of allies. And the movement is positively riddled with nuance, which is not to be feared, but to be celebrated. And to bring it back, the scope in a little bit, co-ops are not inherently immune. You know, with all of that said, we're not inherently immune to systems of oppression, as we are all products of society, and sometimes we fail to recognize our own privilege um, and without intention, reinforce systems of oppression. And what I found through my experience is that the difference 
the cooperative difference is that cooperative businesses, worker cooperatives in particular, have been more likely to question these systems and to do something to change them. Uh, we, we codify inclusive and democratic principles in our bylaws um, and we write them into our operating uh, manuals and we set precedents for something different. And this I have been, uh, I'm honored to have been a part of and uh, in the formation of the, my new, so the new startup cooperative, ABC, a bookkeeping cooperative, and my old cooperative, Pedal People. And a couple of great examples of this are also Third Root Community Health Center, um, which does holistic healing uh, in Brooklyn and uh, supports the tra gender transitioning as a p an element of this uh, holistic healing process. Rainbow Grocery in San Francisco also has queer-friendly policies and support for different formations of families. It's something you don't really see in conventional businesses. Some don't even let you see a doctor when you're pregnant. <laughs> and we also have Aorta Collective, which provides services which include anti-oppression training and resources. So it's a resource, it's a cooperation among cooperatives um, to in using the resources that another cooperative is providing in order to alleviate these systems of oppression in our own individual experiences and in our cooperatives. Uh, so I just want to wish everybody a happy Worker Cooperative Day. It's a big day. And uh, thank you so much for listening and for having me here. So I hope that we can uh, do 12 minutes of questions. I know that's sort of a little bit tighter than, than we had hoped in planning this, but I'm, I also feel like people will probably want to get to the sta heaping stacks of sandwiches outside. Um, so questions, and I'll try to, okay. Uh, anybody else raise your hands? Okay. okay, let's start with that. You, sir? Um, so thank you. Gracias. I, it was very inspiring um, to just realize the diversity, to be confronted by women in power. I think it's something that we do not see, like women of color, immigrant women of color being in positions of power and like leading uh, the larger movement is very important right now. So you guys are amazing. Um, I just had a very question and I hope I would get some suggestions from each and one of you on the panel because I think that your experiences through joining co-ops really connects to my question. Um, as immigrant slash queer woman working at co-ops or with the experience of working at co-ops, um, how were you empowered uh, to the people who reached out to you? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because we're thinking of expanding co-op resources or models for transgender undocumented immigrant women. And I wanna see what worked for you as immigrant, as woman, and as part of the LGBTQ community uh, that worked in reaching out or making you part of the process. No, entonces, eh, como mujeres um, inmigrantes y parte de la comunidad LGBTQ, ¿cómo las personas hicieron alcance a ustedes y las involucraron y las conectaron con el movimiento? Y la, el, la, el contexto de la pregunta es que estamos pensando en expandir nuestros servicios de, de cooperativas a mujeres indocumentadas o inmigrantes que son parte de la comunidad transgénero. Entonces, En el panel hay un intercambio de una persona que es LGBTQ de dos mujeres que son inmigrantes. Entonces, ¿qué funcionó para ustedes en conectarlas en el movimiento de cooperativas? Eh, and should I speak in Spanish? Well, oh, I'm gonna try in English. And if you don't understand, just let me know. <laughs> I, I speak Spanglish. That's why. <laughs> okay. So I think for si se puede. Eh, all the members were immigrants and and started the support coming from the Center for Family Life, which is a center that uh, give help people to get jobs. And so they started this in the first and the second and third and the fourth uh, open house. We invite, we make flyers to invite 
uh, people from our our community. And so if when they come, we explain what uh, we do, what are the benefits, and but also we explain that them they're gonna start joining the co-op, but it's gonna take a few times to get jobs and everything. So it's uh, about the method of, of being patient because some people come to the open house and they, they can, it's like uh, they're gonna get jobs right away. And it's not like that. Sometimes take, it's easy to get jobs right away. Sometimes it's, it takes longer for my co-op. It's now, uh, what I see is that every gener new generation, it's more easy to, to get jobs uh, quickly than before. And I don't know, but our community is full of immigrant people and we don't ask for their status here in, and we never ask for that, so. I just want to add a little bit more about the question in terms of the Apple legal cleaning. What we do is that we don't ask just like Yadira once said, because I'm Yadira too. <laughs> um, we don't ask for the uh, immigration status, that's one. And also we follow certain principles and values that are, um, in, in those are stated within these values and principles, the Apple legal cleaning, and I'm talking just about Apple legal cleaning in, in this situation. Uh, we don't ask for the immigration status. Uh, we don't ask what kind of uh, sexual orientation or who, who, however you want to call it, and I'm not really informed about it, and I'm sorry about that. Um, we don't ask uh, if she's uh, transgender or not. We don't ask anything about that. And they actually had a discussion a long time ago. They were saying, what about if a man comes and that person wants to work? And they were women. All of them were women. They said, you know what? we should allow this person to come and join our group because we are open to anybody who is honest, who is willing to work, and we shouldn't make a distinction within the group. I don't know if that's good enough. I'll just speak very, very quickly. Um, to my, my experience, I found to be very, uh, one th resource that I found to be very helpful um, is, is a, a buddy system as having a mentor when you're starting in a cooperative um, to work directly with somebody that is in that cooperative. Uh, and something that I found to be, to provide a safe space for me is to know for a fact that that person understands uh, where I'm coming from, either because they identify in similar ways or because they're allies. Um, and to have so to have that sort of connection right away has been really helpful. Also in the practices of meetings, um, to start to lay ground rules uh, first and foremost um, to you know express your preferred gender pronoun. Um, is an example of a practice that's been used in, um, in my cooperative. And uh, that, that just uh, alleviates some of the, the social tension when you don't know how people identify, you don't want to impose identif you know, identifying characteristics on them. Uh, so having that built into a practice and not leaving it up to everybody's individual uh, you know, uh, sensitivity to those things is, uh, although we are very sensitive people, um, it's just a way of kind of uh, making it a practice. Yeah. Any second questions? Uh, yes, hi, my name is Maggie. I'm a law student, and um, I just want to thank you for being here and sharing your experiences with us. Um, Jadira one uh, <laughs> spoke about um, a little bit about how it can be a very long, difficult process of finding clients and um, and. Uh, selling your product or whatever it is that you're doing. And I was wondering if you guys could speak a little more in detail about um, how that experience can be when you're first starting out, whether the cooperative is first starting out or you as a new worker at the cooperative finding clients and actually getting business. Thank you. Uh, 
when CISA police started, they were 15 people. So the way that they, they, do, they did to get clients, they started with the workers, social workers in the center. They started to communicate the, their friends about the, the CISA police cleaning service. And then they designed uh, flyers which we they, they we used to go to make three hours each member has to make three hours of publicity which we walk in the street and uh, put in the flyers in the houses or sometimes hand it to the to people we used to go to to the ¿cómo se dice feria? fairs fairs and handle uh, our flyers and we have we have the website uh, but also i most of the clients that we got it's for it's reference for our clients it's for the job you do the 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 quality of the job if you make a good uh, job the client is going to be happy and refer and refer you to uh, friends and to family and that's the the most uh, client, the the most important way for a co-op get clients. Uh, you, you ma'am, yes. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, I'm Linda uh, from Damayan. We organize Filipino domestic workers. So uh, yeah, I got it that uh, even undocumented uh, workers can be partners in a co-op, right? So uh, my question is, uh, how is the income reporting done? Individually or by the co-op or through another organization? Uh, and, uh, and then I have another question, I'm sorry. Because we're, uh, we're a, a domestic workers organization and we get you know, calls from different you know, employers for workers. Uh, the limited experience we have is that it's very hard to find, you know, uh, employers who are willing to give decent wages. So how did you get, how did you reach that point where you are able to charge 20 or $25 per hour? Because uh, that's, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, beyond living wage, and that's great. Okay, thank you. So about the income and I think it's depend on how your co-op is uh, incorporated. In our co-op, each member has to pay their own taxes, and the co-op also pay it own. But uh, for the members, each member decides should they want to pay or they don't want to pay. And what was the other question? What was the how did you raise the wages to 2025? How did you find great employers here? Oh, um, we have uh, the we don't charge per hour. We charge per size of the apartment, house, office, whatever. And we have our prices on the website. So w if a client check the website, they have an idea how much we charge. And if they call, the, our secretary give them an estimate for how much it would be, and the client decide if they want to pay what we charge or not. It depends on the client. But usually we don't have complaints, so that's why, uh, because we don't charge per hour, sometimes could make $15 per hour, sometimes could make a until thirty dollars per hour, but also because we're doing a very good job. <laughs> I saw one hand over here. Yes, sir. Hi there. My name is Peter. I'm a lawyer from Brooklyn, and my question is, I guess. Every member in the co-op has to contribute equally in terms of resources, time, labor, and capital. That's my assumption, so correct me if I'm wrong. And 
my question based on this assumption is what if uh, a year or two down the line of starting the co-op, some members cannot contribu uh, contribute equally to other members? How do you deal with that? Bueno, en nuestra cooperativa sí, todo es igual. Todos los miembros tenemos que contribuir igual en, ya sea en eventos, en talleres, todos contribu contribu contribuimos um, en este, el mismo tiempo. O sea, yo no tengo por qué, es, porque todos somos iguales, somos una cooperativa. O sea, yo no tengo por qué yo sacrificarme más por mis compañeras. Entonces, pues nosotros tenemos en mi cooperativa una lista, por ejemplo, incluso para los eventos. Nosotros tenemos una lista rotatoria, que o sea, por ejemplo, hoy participo yo, si mañana tenemos otro evento, tenemos la persona que le toca participar y así todas tenemos, todas estamos participando. No es que tú no, tú sí, porque tú sabes más, tú no sabes, tú te quedas atrás. Todas tenemos la oportunidad de ir aprendiendo poco a poco. Y o sea, y si una no quiere participar, no es que no quiera, o sea, cuando tenemos la cooperativa es porque tú te estás comprometiendo a algo y quieres superarte y lo vas a hacer. Y todas las que estamos en la cooperativa es porque queremos superarnos. Ya, gracias. In terms of cooperatives, in our cooperative, we are all equal. In terms, so what we do is that we have sort of a, all of us go to the events, the workshops. We contribute the same amount of time. We are all consider ourselves equal, and it doesn't make sense for one of us to sacrifice ourselves more than the other. And so what we do is we actually have a list in which uh, each of us participate equally. So one day we, one of us will go to an event and then the other day someone else will go on that list. Um, and so that way we can all participate and, and it doesn't become a thing of, oh, you know more and I know less or you could do this and I can't do that because we're all learning. Um, and then it's also about a commitment of just bettering ourselves and improving ourselves in the process. I would like to add something. Uh, for us, we have our values, and every member knows that we have to participate. But I have to say this too for the people that wanted to have a co op to be aware, sometimes this is part of the conflict because even that we have our values and our rules. Sometimes people don't participate enough, and some people participate more than the others. But, and it's where we get a uh, conflict. But the most important thing, I think, is uh, that all the members at the end of the day, have, we know that we want to keep our co-op successful. And it's a challenge to, to resolve that conflict, but it's going to be there always because especially when we are a lot of members like in my co-op 54 members it's going to be a conflict always thank you i'd just like to add one other thing as far as uh, capital contributions go those are uh, those are set uh, and every member there every member has a buy-in uh, when you become a member of a worker cooperative you contribute a certain amount of money, um, which is determined uh, by um, in, in the cooperative's bylaws um, or operating agreements. And But as far as uh, how much you work uh, is concerned, there are cooperatives that uh, in which you have a system in place where you're compensated based on the proportions of work or the services that you provide. So not all members are necessarily compensated exactly the same amount of money. Um, so that's just a little bit different. Uh, sometimes you can write into your bylaws that you know every every member needs to contribute a certain amount of time of labor, um, but that's n there is also room for swing in that. Um, however, the initial payment, initial st you know stock payment, that is a voting share, one member, one vote principle. That is a um, a very I I equality. Um, er, that is a, a policy that promotes equality in the in the cooperative. We had one question here, and then we can move there and, and there. Yeah, uh, a question. I'm from I'm Teresa from Damayan. 
I have a question. We're always talking about profit, you know. But it's a fact also that some cooperative fail. So how about the division of losses, not just the division of profit? And also another question is uh, when it comes to lawsuit, um, if there's a lawsuit, I don't know if there's an insurance that covers or is it in the name of the cooperative all, all the members will be held you know, responsible or I don't know, legal a word to say with the lawsuit? Separate entity or I don't know legally. Uh, sounds like you folks have uh, a lot of questions for attorneys. So I would, <laughs> I would uh, recommend that you connect with the attorneys um, in this conference. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am not an attorney, um, but there are ways of incorporating your cooperative um, that. Uh, provide um, liability um, uh, protection um, in the case of a lawsuit. That's all I'm going to say, because I'm not a lawyer. Um, and uh, I'm so sorry, what was the first part of your question? Division of losses, because division oh, yes. of profits, so there's also losses. Absolutely. I mean, both sides. Right, so both of those things are uh, written into the bylaws or operating agreements, depending on the type of, uh, uh, of a cooperative that you have. Um, operating agreements are generally for LLCs, and uh, bylaws are generally for cooperative corporations or another form of corporation. Bueno, en nuestra cooperativa, pues las ganancias no las repartimos, pero cuando hay pérdidas, uh, gastos, lo que sea, entre las miembros, uh, por partes iguales, te tenemos que poner los gastos o lo que sea, lo que tengamos que poner. O sea, entre la cooperativa, nosotros, lo que sea es gastos o que se falta dinero para algo, eso, eso no lo ponemos nosotras. O también, pues como trabajamos en limpieza, um, Muchas veces se daña sin querer, uno daña un refri, una estufa, lo que sea. Eso, si tenemos dinero ahorrado de la cooperativa, lo cogemos. Y si no, entre todas las miembros pagamos eso. O sea, todo lo hacemos por partes iguales. Uh, in terms of sh uh, sharing the profits, we do that equally in the same way we do the losses or any other expenses we have as members, we share that equally. And so each of us pay the expenses for whatever it is and we all put in. Um, so for example, when we do cleaning um, services, sometimes uh, for whatever reason, a refrigerator breaks or a stove breaks, if we have savings, do we um, put that in? And if we don't, then we all um, share that expense and we put in for that equally. And which is the point of what we do, uh, we get paid directly by our clients. So every member, we pay a certain amount each month for the expenses of the co-op. And if we have a situation where the stove breaks or we damage something, uh, if it's a big amount, the co-op, with the, fun, the profits of the co-op, we pay for it. But let's say if, if uh, I broke the vacuum and it's just gonna be $50, it come out of my pocket. And that's it. Two, two more questions, or uh, two or three. Uh, well, well he, here, and then here, and then there. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Stephanie, and my question is, um, if you're in a uh, cooperative with some other uh, people, and you have a set wage that you um, give all your 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 um, cooperative group. What about in the long run? Like if the if the uh, cooperative lasts for years and it's really good business, what about like are you do you tell the rest of your group that they have to uh, put away money for a retirement or some sort? So there are accounts uh, in 
cooperative businesses that are uh, called equity accounts. And it's a, a way to grow your business um, in, uh, in a sustainable way. Um, so if when you make, after a year passes and your cooperative has made X amount of money uh, after all of your expenses have been paid and so forth, you'll decide as a group uh, referring to your bylaws how much money you would like to sock away in the co-op. And that can be in the name of the cooperative itself, it can be in the name of the cooperative members, and each of those accounts uh, will exist until the dissolution of the cooperative or until one of the members decides to leave. So how much money you uh, decide to put in those accounts um, is up to the members of the cooperative democratically. I also I would like to add that it depends also of how your co-op is in incorporated. This is what is incorporated by non-profit. So that means that the money that is on the co-op, it can be distributed for the members. So right now we don't have any retirement uh, plan, anything, but we're trying to, we're talking about that because we want that. Members that they found the co-op, they've been there for eight years. I've been there for six years. And each new generation, it's been for less years than others. So, but we're trying to, to see wha what we can do, how to figure it out to have our retirement. We had one question here and then end in, end in the rear. Yes. Hey, uh, congratulations to you all on uh, dumping the middleman and taking the chance to empower yourselves to uh, start a cooperative. So I guess my question is, so how was the process from like, you know, from your previous experience, you work with like abusive employers and all of this. How was the transition of the mentality from like being an, ab an abused worker or part of corporate America and now, you know, taking, uh, putting hands on your destiny, like uh, being now being a business owner? How was the transition? Did you use any materials? Did you, how, how was the process? That's my question. Thank you. Bueno, pues, el proceso, pues, yo creo que es de 360 grados, porque al tener un, un patrón y ahora ser dueña de tu propio negocio y tú misma pues no tienes patrón, no tienes un patrón que te esté mandando porque, o sea, y ni los clientes son los que ponen el precio de lo, lo que tú vas a trabajar. Nosotros ponemos el precio que queremos que nos paguen. Y pues, ¿qué será que la transición? Pues, ¿qué te puedo decir? Que pues fue difícil porque, pues, o sea, tuvimos que luchar mucho para conseguir eso. O sea, no es fácil, eso no se hace de la noche a la mañana. Nosotros nos tomó un año de reuniones para poder un año entero completito de reuniones todos los días de ocho horas para poder uh, formar la cooperativa. Y o sea, no es fácil, es un proceso largo, pero yo creo que todo proceso pues tiene su recompensa. Mira, ahora este, pues nosotros somos pues dueñas trabajadoras, mmm, pues no tenemos un patrón, nosotros, ni, o sea, es, tenemos un empleador, pero pues no nos grita, no nada, uno pone los precios, incluso uno pone el horario y pues es mejor a lo que teníamos antes. In terms of the, the process, well, it's a 360. Uh, you know, you have a boss and then you end up being your own boss and there's no one there telling you what to do and the clients are the ones that are putting um, the rates. Uh, we are, we're the ones that we are asking for what we want in terms of the wages. And well, what can I say? It was a hard struggle. Um, it was a lot of work and it wasn't from night to day that this happened. Um, it took us about a year of meeting, uh, eight hour meetings uh, constantly every day. 
um, to form this cooperative. So it is a long process, but then when you put in that work, you get compensated. So we, we don't have a job and there's nobody screaming at us or yelling at us or putting uh, pricing to our work or our hours. We get to do that for ourselves. And one last question in the rear. Hi. <coughs> oh, that's weird. Uh, my name is Kealani, and I'm currently one of four partner owners um, of an LLC. Um, we have about <coughs> 20 people that work with us, and we're hoping to become a cooperative as soon as possible. Um, and we've sort of brought the idea to the people that work with us, and um, I've been met with a little bit of fear, which was surprised me. I thought everybody would be like, oh, hooray, you know? Um, so my question for you guys is, could you talk about some of the specific challenges or maybe difficulties that you experience, like interpersonally in your cooperative that you think um, maybe we might come up against and how you have dealt with or do deal with those things? Uh, I think for my experience in the co-op, uh, one of the most <laughs> uh, challenges we have every day, and I, I think we're gonna keep it forever, <laughs> <laughs> is that <laughs> that to to get to decide what to do because we're six, 54 members, each person thinks different, and. Sometimes it's difficult to make an uh, agreement in something. Uh, but we use bold and we use sometimes con consensus, consensus. And that's the way we get to decide what's the best for the co-op. But also that means that some people are not agree with what ha decide. But it, I think in any kind of business is always like that. So that's why I said it's a challenge. Another challenge is that sometimes uh, in our co-op, people just wanted to focus on work for the work that we get paid. But when we need to work for the co-op, like participate in the communities, that's a big challenge too because most of the People, they don't want to spend a lot of time working in the communities and, the, and we don't get paid for all those hours that we spend in the communities. Uh, what another challenge? Oh, I think one. You want to have something to add? One of the challenges they face, uh, just like Teresa mentioned, is information. People have to know what a cooperative means, what it is, um, to have a business plan, how they're gonna run it, just like they were mentioning here, depending on the model you're gonna choose. People have to know the information, so then later on, they can decide based on that uh, legal aspect or in terms of finances and stuff like that. And disagreement is one of the, um, challenges, but I always think about um, the disagreement as something important and valuable because when they have a conflict, we have to focus on how to solve the conflict. And there is always something good about the conflict, and that's how I like to see it. Of course, you're gonna have to go, you, ha you will have to go through the conflict, and they will suffer the conflict. Everybody will suffer the conflict, but at the end, we have to see it as something positive because something good is going to born from it. I absolutely agree um, that conflict isn't something to shy away from. Uh, it's something to name and identify and uh, embrace as a way of getting to a common solution. And you can use deciding how to decide also is a really a very preliminary step for a group. How are you going to make decisions and, uh, and basically try to nail down a process for that? Um, another tool that I found very helpful 
uh, has been to uh, to like um, like Adira said, to say have use resources and uh, educate yourselves and train yourselves to what are the s what are the steps that we need to do in order to become a worker cooperative, and how are we going to uh, complete those tasks? And uh, you know, there's a lot. There are a lot of resources and training out there. And I think as the more that you're on the same page, you know, education-wise, uh, the easier it'll be to um, to come at conflicts from a you know a place of solidarity and a place of cooperation. Thanks so much to our panelists. And uh, there's lunch right outside.